we're really excited. We got the the 1.0 Hasura going out. It's got um, really um, nice uh, read support. Um, the um, system is going to be really interesting. I'm going to give a quick demo of it. I said I would keep it short because we have shown a bunch of this previously. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, I'll give a quick demo of what we're looking at. And so um, the core features, um, we've really looked to approach reads really aggressively in the V1. Um, V2 is coming out pretty soon. We're going to be doing mutation support for that. But for the, for this version, we're going hard on reads. So um, the biggest part for us was query planning and composition. So the cross collection joins, permissions and OSI ad hoc queries, having all of those pushed down to the database. So that is a performance system has been kind of like top priority for us. Um, and that's really important. Like for, from our side of things, that's really what we've talked to a lot of our customers about and seen a lot of feedback that uh, people really appreciate from our side is how we can layer on all of these elements while still keeping the, the query's performance. So um, I'll show some of that and we'll be able to talk about it in a couple seconds. But then um, also having the ability to use the right tool for the right job and join data between external data sources and have that ability to say that like, hey, I, I have like, you know, a loyalty database over in Postgres. I've got my transactional database in MongoDB. Like having those patterns and ha having like larger organizations be able to tie and mesh those data points together has also been really important um, in terms of like what we're looking to uh, do for MongoDB. And then schema composition and logical models. There is no like like schema in MongoDB. So we have to infer a schema and create something. So we have our first cut of that and it's going to be continue getting better over time and how we do that. But we'll show how you can still get up to speed really quickly with your teams using MongoDB and Hasura. So um, let's go into the fun stuff. Let's do a demo. So we're going to connect to uh, MongoDB. We actually have MongoDB locally, a cloud instance, and a Postgres instance locally, which we're going to connect to all at once. Um, we're going to track a collection and generate a schema from a single document. We're then going to create a cross-collection join, add some permissions to it, and uh, join up to a Postgres database. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to inject some metadata at one point. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it sort of quickly. Again, um, I recommend you go and actually check out our docs. Really, uh, they've just been updated. So some of the more interesting ones that have been updated are um, you know, MongoDB Atlas, how to connect and stuff like that, uh, how to support, how we support uh, logical models in, uh, so that's under GraphQL schema, how we support logical models in MongoDB. So that's another really important piece. And then, you know, just all the rest of the normal stuff that we uh, go about doing in there as well. So um, I've pre-connected up uh, a local Postgres instance, a local MongoDB instance, and an Atlas instance. So um, within each of those, we also have some uh, dummy data. So we're using the MongoFlix demo, which is um, a really nice like kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, you got movies, you've got comments, you've got users, all the stuff you need to build an application pretty much. Uh, we also have a loyalty table over here, which we're going to be tracking later and then doing some joins on. So um, let's start by tracking our first collection. So uh, if I go to users, and then if I, I have MongoDB Compass over here, what we're going to do is take a sample document, like a, like a sort of a document that we're going to be using to infer the models from. So we get this new window that comes up. And we, it'll allow us to create a model within Hasura, which will be used for our GraphQL schema from a single document in my database. So when I validate that, it'll really easily just take it through, analyze it, you know, uh, cast the types or, or infer the types, and then track pretty much. And that's now been added to my API. And we're able to do that uh, pretty quickly. Uh, and all of these are customizable afterwards. So you're not sort of set with the one the first time you do it. You'll be able to go to uh, the logical model window and edit these uh, schema elements afterwards as well. So we'll do the same thing for comments. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do like sort of a user and comment mapping uh, type of API. So again, uh, this is some nested data. So we have um, you know a couple more models that it's creating. And what we're able to do is we've tracked those. Those are now um, available in my API, I believe. Uh, Oh, I haven't created a, a relationship yet between those. And what we're able to do is now create a rela relationship between the user's model and the, uh, the comments model. So that'll be a one-to-many relationship. So we can come over here and uh, create an array relationship for that. And we're going to use email as the key between each of those. So this is kind of like a, like a mock-up demo. But you, you can kind of get an understanding of how you would create an API using this. Again, um, you know, as we sort of create those types for you, you can come over here and edit those types as well. And without doing any migrations at all, that'll actually uh, reflect back for in both your API and also allow you to map any new elements from your database or remove elements as needed um, from your uh, MongoDB Compass instance. One of our, not, not Compass, but your MongoDB database. Uh, one of the interesting points about this as well, I'm currently running an E-Lite instance uh, locally, but 
Um, if you run this on cloud, we also have a, a fun project called Schema Registry, um, which will allow you to sort of uh, check to make sure the changes that you're making are, are safe still, and it'll give you notifications. If you uh, create a breaking change in your API, you know, you change something that's currently actively in use because, uh, you know, we don't have the migration system quite so much in, uh, in MongoDB. We get to sort of uh, do things on the fly a little bit more flexibly. So. I just uh, tracked two collections and then created a, uh, a relationship between them. And then using this query, you can see that I'm now returning back all of those, uh, all of the users and their associated comments from MongoDB. So that was really quick, really easy. Um, digging in a little bit deeper, I'm going to do a bit of a, a food network, uh, load some metadata in so that I don't need to create the permissions and stuff. Um, you know, on the fly. So what we've got here is we've uh, tracked the uh, the users and comments. We also in uh, Atlas, in MongoDB Atlas, we're using the same database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track the same uh, collection of comments, and I'm going to call it more comments uh, because I'm not creative that way. Um, so, and then what we're going to do is uh, is um, you know track a loyalty table in Postgres as well. So now we've got three databases, uh, two locally, one in the cloud, uh, and we're actually going to uh, do that with a permission on top of it. So on the users table within my MongoDB collection, uh, what I've done is I've added a permission role on it um, to say that like, hey, email equals XSRA user ID, and then uh, and then you know show all the columns kind of thing. And all of these are all the other ones, so com comments and loyalty. I, I've sort of just allowed the users table to view them as needed kind of thing. So um, with that being said, if I since I have my XSRA admin secret set and my role and my user ID set, this will allow me to let's refresh this really quick. This will allow me to emulate using um, uh, the user's permission for this user ID. Uh, that this would usually be passed using a JWT token or a uh, or a webhook authentication, so you could pass in the context of which user is accessing the system. Um, if I then run a query, I'm now running. Um, this will be pushed down to the database, so name email comments, that'll be pushed down to my MongoDB instance. And then we'll be joining on that to external data sources. So more comments from MongoDB Atlas, as well as a loyalty database, which is in Postgres hosted locally. So when we run this, I should get one user back, which is nice, I do. Um, so uh, this, uh, this user that I've specified here, I'm able to get back their associated comments, more comments from MongoDB Atlas, and loyalty from Postgres afterwards. So um, that's a really quick demo of what we're um, doing with MongoDB Atlas. This is currently available on cloud and e Lite as well on the, on the self-hosted version. Um, yeah, you, you can give it a try, get started with it. Feel free to ping me with any comments over in the right-hand sidebar. And, uh, and like, you know, coming soon, we'll also be having mutation support as well as part of our development roadmap. So uh, that's pretty much all I had to go with today. So I really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you very much. Martin, that was awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, if folks on the call have not checked out Martin Cicero Con talk, was the title? It should have been Mongo all along. It should have been Mongo all along. Yeah, it's yeah. it's uh it's that that flexible uh, non migration story. I really um I, I really think that it, it it's really like the easiest way to get started. Very cool. All right. Thanks so much, Martin.